Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tip Tuesday. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wink Sister on Instagram and Facebook, and I'm so glad that you're here today. If you have not seen my Tip Tuesdays before, I do a short tip on wig wearing every Tuesday, and I just try to present some things that I think would be helpful in the wig life and the wig wearing experience. So today's Tip Tuesday is how to make a lace front and a part line, a mono part or a mono top, look more realistic and more like scalp. And the wig I'm going to demonstrate on is a discontinued wig. This is was a um, house brand wig by an online retailer that is no longer available. It's a, actually a couple of years old. And so you can't purchase this wig at this time, but this tip will apply to any wig that you believe needs some more realism on the lace front and the part line. So if you want to see how I do it, then stick around for this video. All right, so let's First of all, talk about what I mean by making a lace front or a part line more realistic. And again, I'm using a lace, um, a mono part wig. You can do this with a mono top. Um, theoretically, you might be able to do this with a basic cap, although um, I think the technique is just a little bit different. I actually haven't tried that before with a basic cap. That may be a future video, but for now, I'm assuming that you have a mono part or a mono top wig that you would be doing this on. So let's take a look at this one right now. So here's the lace front on this one. It is actually not too bad, but you can see some of the knotting here and it just looks a little bit heavier than a typical uh, hairline would look. And then the mono part, you can barely see it. Again, you can see a little bit of the scalp appearance. So it's definitely not the worst mono part that I've ever seen. But when you pay extra money to have that feature on a cap, uh, you kind of want to be able to see it a little bit more than you can on this one. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do. And you can do any of these. You don't have to do them all. So some of the things that you can do to make these look more realistic. You can use makeup and you can pluck. So I'm going to show a little bit of both technique. I'm going to be minimal on the plucking because I believe that that is more advanced and a lot of people aren't as comfortable with plucking as they may be with just putting a little bit of makeup on. So I'll show you the technique, but I'm not going to go all out with the plucking on this one. Again, I want these Tip Tuesdays to be quick and easy, something that most people are able to do even in the beginning of the weight wearing journey. So what I have here to help me, I just have a regular tweezers and I've got a couple of different makeup options. So there is a product on, out there called Milano Scalp Illusion and it's a palette of kind of like a thicker foundation, um, like more of a heavy coverage type pan foundation in a variety of colors. So um, I can show you this, but I'll tell you guys, this is pretty expensive. Uh, if you want to try something that is marketed to help with wigs in this way, you can certainly purchase that and I will put a link to it on in the description of this video. I purchased it just to try it out and see how it works. And while I think it's fine, and it definitely is great if you're not sure what color you need to use on your wig, I also think any type of foundation or concealer will work. So I do have some foundation here. It's a foundation that I don't really like for my face. I had got sucked into like an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad or something at some point and I had purchased it and I really don't like it but it works just fine for the part line of a wig so I figure instead of throwing it away I'll use it for this purpose but any foundation or concealer works I think you just have to play with what shade works best um, sometimes people will say use the same shade that you use on your face I personally found using a little bit of a lighter shade works better for the scalp because your scalp isn't exactly the same color as your face. And let's just take a look at mine just to demonstrate since you can see it. But 
you can see that my scalp lot is not the same shade as my face. So I do find a little bit of a lighter shade works well for these types of enhancements. And then the last thing is just a loose translucent powder. You can use any powder. It doesn't have to be loose. It could be cake, a you know, like a, a pan of it. Uh, whatever you have on hand should be fine. Again, I do find just a little bit lighter than your typical makeup works well, but before you go out and purchase something special, I would definitely try to make use of what you have available. The last warning I'll give you on this is um, when you use foundation, it does not fully wash out. So when you go to wash the wig, you will have a bit of a stain line on your part. And I don't, I don't have, yeah, I didn't do that one. I don't have a wig in here to show you that, but just know that it will not wash fully out. So if you do this, it is, it's going to be semi-permanent. Now, if you go too heavy-handed, you can wash it and you can fade it a little bit. And if you get some on the hair fibers, which you will in the beginning, um, again, that will wash off. But whatever you put on the actual monofilament, will the a line will remain there. So I'm going to pause this video and figure out how best to set up the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is plucking. And if you are going to attempt to pluck, there are a few things that you need to be aware of as you're embarking on this. First of all, this wig is a mono part wig. So I am limited in where I can part my wig. If you have a mono top wig where the whole entire top of the wig has this monofilament, meaning you can part it anywhere you want, and if you think you're going to vary the part, if you sometimes are gonna part it on one side or the other, or sometimes more in the center, then I would proceed with caution on plucking a part line because you don't want to make it um, look funny when you go to change that part. So just keep that in mind if you think you'll be switching up your parting on your wig. The other thing you wanna be careful of is you don't wanna tear the monofilament. So you wanna be very careful. I have seen many tutorials on how to pluck a wig. Everybody does it just a little bit differently. And I have seen where um, people will say to take a, a little fingernail scissors and trim off the hair kind of right at the knot and then try to pull the knot out um, to try to avoid ripping the lace. You want to be really careful not to tear the lace. My from all the research I, I've done, and I also have to give you guys a caveat, I am not a plucking expert. I have done this once before. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I have a lot of experience paying attention and researching and hearing what other people say. So my advice to you, if you're going to pluck, start slowly, maybe practice on a, a wig that you don't care that much about, and uh, go very so, so you basically, you just want to try to pluck out like one hair at a time and you just kind of pick it and you pluck it. Um, you don't want to grab a whole bunch of hairs at once because now, now I don't know if you can see this, but I did get more than one hair. It is going to be hard to not get more than one hair if the part is densely knotted. So just do the best that you can. And the fewer hair fibers you grab to pluck, the less likely you are to be to rip the lace or the monofilament. And it's a bit of a tedious, so we'll see, we'll get a little closer here. So you hold it taut and you just pull. It's a little bit of a tedious task, but the good news is once you're done, you're done and you don't have to do it again. So that's one way. So there we go, I got it and I got a few hairs and I just do a real quick pull and then I get the hairs. So that's one way that you can make a very densely parted wig look more realistic to, to broaden that parting space. So I recommend for wigs super densely knotted that you give that a try. You can also pluck the hairline. So on this wig, 
I believe that the hairline also isn't terribly realistic because it's pretty densely knotted. So you using the same technique, you just go in and you start to find a hair, you know, one or two at the most to pluck and then you just quickly pull it out. And you can do that along the hairline as well. I would say um, the hairline, you wanna be really careful not to over pluck. I mean, you don't wanna over pluck anything, but you might um, do a few and then put it on and see where you're at. You can try to pluck it while it's on your head. Um, I would only really recommend that for very minimal plucking, like if you're just gonna do a few hairs here and there, because um, you can't hold that lace nice and taut and protect it from ripping. So, you know, one of the techniques I'm doing is I'm holding the lace taut as I pull the hair out so that I'm trying to protect it from ripping. So that's the plucking technique. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of plucking here and I'll speed up the, the camera uh, and just kind of work on a little bit of plucking. Like I said, I'm not gonna do a ton of plucking. Um, the makeup is the star of the show. Okay, so I am back to show you the plucking that I have done so far. So you can see how much more you can see that part line now. And I did pluck just a little bit of the hairline right here because it was just knotted all the way across. So I wanted a little bit less knotting. So now I'm just gonna do a few refinements by coming up to my mirror and I'm just gonna look and see where I see some big thick knots that I don't like very gently and in my phone this is very hard and I'm just gonna try to pick at a few big knots that I feel like I left wow this is really hard to do in my phone so I won't do too much because I can't do it very well on my phone, but so that's the refining part of it that you'll do with the plucking. So already I see such an improvement both in the hairline and the part line. Now I could probably do a little bit more um, on the hairline and the part line, but I think at this point I'm just gonna move on to the makeup because I think that is the easiest part and the less scary part for most people. So let me just quickly show you the amount of hair that I actually plucked out. And you're gonna see that I sit on my toilet when I do this. Um, let's see, how do I get down here? There it is. Sorry guys, I'm gonna come around the camera. That's it. That's the hair. I did not take a whole lot of hair. That's all of it. So it's not a ton, a very little amount can make a huge difference. All right, let me rearrange this so that I can get the makeup going. All right, so now we're gonna do the makeup. First thing you might wanna try before you mess with foundation or anything like that is you might wanna just try a little bit of translucent powder on the part line to, and even the lace front to see if that's enough to hide the knotting. If the knotting isn't, this is pretty dark knotting, I think I'm gonna need to do the, trans, the foundation, but um, if it's not super dark knotting, you could just take some powder and basically just put it on a little brush. I would use a brush that holds a good amount of powder. This is an old brush. I've had it for like 15 years. So um, I don't even know what brand it is, but um, so you can just start to put this on. Now don't worry about getting it on the hair fibers. We will wipe that off and it will come off just fine. But sometimes just a little bit of powder is all that you need to make that that um, kind of, it covers the knots a little bit. And even in the front. This can also be done with a lace 
material that maybe is a, not quite the right shade for your skin. So I'm just putting powder on wherever I see knotting. The other thing that really helps knotting on a lace front is to kind of rub it a little bit. Like with your fingers, press on the knotting and rub it. Be careful, you don't wanna wreck the lace. So I'm, I'm not going crazy on the lace, but I am rubbing the knotting and it softens those knots a little bit and moves them around a little bit. And that's another great tip for making the knotting look more realistic. So I would definitely try that and a little bit of powder. And there you go. I think that has helped a ton already. And now all you have to do, if you get it on the hair, is I would just take a damp washcloth and I would then just brush along the hair next to the monofilament just to get rid of any of the powder that you might have gotten on the hair. Huge difference, don't you think? That may be all you need to do, but if you do need to go to the next level, when I do foundation, I do the underside of the lace and the top side, so I do both. So um, let me just grab a little foundation here. And I, this is a little squeeze bottle. So I just put some foundation and what I'm using here is an eyebrow brush. So you've got your spoolie on one end, which can help actually um, afterwards and you've got your brush part. So the first thing I do is I take and I put my finger over the part line on the outside. So I'm gonna stick my finger over the part line and then I'm gonna turn the wig inside out because I need to see where that part line is. Now I did put a little powder on it so I can see a little bit of that powder, but let me move my finger. See when I move my finger and I put my finger back there, I can sort of see the shadow of my finger and I'm gonna draw the foundation over my finger. That way, I know where that part is because I'm not gonna paint this whole monofilament. You can't see it all because um, the hair covers it. So, and actually I'm just gonna do this. That way I've got it like a little palette here. And then I just paint it over. On a very densely knotted wig, this is, it's really hard to see where you need to put the foundation because it'd be hard, to, it's hard to see your finger through it. So sometimes I'll have done this and then I'll go to put it on and realize I didn't get it in the right spot and then I just gotta go back and redo it. So I'm gonna paint it all down and with pressing on my finger, I am pressing in the, powder, the foundation. So some of it's gonna go through the material and I, see how it went through onto my finger? Just keep a cloth handy so now I gotta go through on this side and I've gotta do that again. So I wanna kinda press it back through. I'm not being super precise because I'm trying to be conscious of time. So now I'll just do that a few more times just to make sure that I've got it all where I need it to be. So I'll be speeding this up so that you don't have to sit and watch every single tedious second. Okay, so I've got that where I need it to be. So I'm just gonna clean up my hand here and I'm gonna put it on because I wanna clean up those hair fibers, but I just wanna make sure I've got it where I need it to be. And this is still a little wet, so some might come off on my head on the other side, but that's okay. All right, so now I've got it on the hair fibers here, so I'm just gonna 
try to clean those hair fibers. I might need to use a little bit of makeup remover on the hair fibers. Let me show that to you. So a little bit of oil-free makeup remover if you're having trouble getting it off the hair fibers, you know, because foundation is meant to not be super removable. So just a little bit on a cotton ball will not hurt the hair at all, but will help get rid of excess foundation. And I'm not, and then I'll take that washcloth again. And now I might use this little spoolie just to make sure that I don't have anything that was left behind can get spread in. So there you go. Now it's a little bit wet and so it's going to dry a little bit, but that looks way more realistic. Now I'm not sure if I got all the makeup off the hair, so I might see how I said it was wet still. You can wait till it dries a little bit if you don't want to get it on your own head, but it comes right off. But I might want to um, take this now in my hand and just make sure that I got all of the foundation off. You can take a dry cloth and sort of tap it in just to make, or a towel or whatever, just to make sure that there's any kind of wet foundation left that you kind of soak up that excess. It just all depends on how much you put on there. So that is how you can make a lace, a mono part look a little more realistic. And then you can do the same thing. If the, if the powder that you use wasn't enough to disguise the knotting on the lace, you can also use a little bit of foundation on that knotting. So powder, foundation, tweezers. That's all you need to make a wig look a little more realistic, those mono features. And I have done, the tweezing I haven't done a ton, but the foundation and the powder, I've done a lot on these parts and it works great and looks super realistic. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys and it gave you another idea of how to make wigs look more realistic. And please don't forget, people are not looking at you up this close. They're not coming up and inspecting your head. In addition, when you're talking with people, um, you're moving around some, you're, you know, you're at a good, especially right now, at a good distance, and so what you think looks obvious is not going to look obvious to others, I promise you. So if you're looking at this right now and saying, oh, I can see a little bit of makeup there, well, you work on that. But know that people aren't looking at directly at the top of your head. They're seeing you like this from this distance and there's no way that that's going to look obvious to anybody. So please start to relax about your kind of wig anxiety and what you think people see. They're really not that observant and they're not going to notice the little things. I also, and I've said this in another video, I really want to encourage you. If you're struggling with the wig life and you're struggling with people knowing, please take an hour or two hours and go someplace in public or maybe at work and just become an observer of people's hair. Watch and look, you will see everything that you worry about in your own wigs. You will find that in people's hair. Wigs that look, this one is getting a little frizzy and uh, kind of uh, worse for wear. Go around and look and see how many people you see who has hair have hair like this. I had a former coworker whose hairline was so wiggy and she did not wear wigs. She just had a very thick, dense hairline. I remember sitting in many meetings with her and I'd be looking at her going, gosh, I just really can't believe that's not a wig. And it wasn't. 
um, cause she was a friend of mine. And, um, but it was such a thick, dense hairline that every one of us would worry if that were a wig that people would be able to tell, but that was her hair. Look at how many people have, um, sideburn hair that is graying or a different color than the rest of their hair. So please know that whatever you worry about in your wigs, I guarantee you, if you look hard enough, you will find people in public whose real bio hair looks just like what you're worried about with your wig. So just try not to worry so much, but here's a great tip for you. Thank you so much for watching this Tip Tuesday. If you have questions for me about anything I show, please let me know. If you have suggestions for future Tip Tuesdays, let me know. Please subscribe, like this video if you thought it was helpful, and leave me a comment because all of that helps me feel encouraged to keep doing these things, but also YouTube to say, hmm, that channel there must be doing some good stuff. We're going to recommend it more. That just helps. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon.